Okay, and welcome to the next session of Introduction to Programming. Now, as promised, I'm going to start with a little bit of an example that we've seen already in the slides. Uh, it's perhaps a little bit different, but not that much. So over here we have our cat header file, where we define what happens... Oh no, here we have the cat header file, which decides what happens in um, our cat class. So we have a cl class cats, and in this class, we basically publicly announce that we have a constructor for our cats. We have uh, speak as a member function, uh, get age, set weight, and its age and its weight. Whereas those latter two are basically variables that are private. So as soon as we use them, for instance, in our main function here, um, we can use frisky.speak because frisky is an object of class cats. So as soon as we uh, execute this statement over here. We suddenly have our object cat um, um, instantiated as an object which we call frisky and we can ha have um, speak as a function but we can't um, access these two variables over here. Its age and its weight are not visible. What you can however do is you can set the age of the cat and you can set the weight of the cat. And we're, as we've seen we can put with this constant keyword and, uh, and make sure that uh, with this constant keyword you can uh, state that the age, the get age function will never change any of the data members of the class cats, right? And the implementation of the cat um, class is done over here, where you can see that its constructor is basically initializing the two member um, var variables, its age and its weight to zero, speak basically outputs to the console the string meow and get age uh, retrieves its age and set weight um, sets the weight um, the class's weight to the weight that we passed here as a variable right that's all we have so far and these are this reflects more or less what we had so far in the slides now we're going to do, do two things that are very similar to the example that you need to solve in your next assignments and one of them is uh, we want to, for instance, add a few more constructors. So if I add the cat frisky over here, we can call it frisky in the main function, but we don't store in a class that the name of this particular cat is frisky, for instance. So let's do that, and let's do it without any strings. We basically just use character arrays for this. So what we could do here is we could just say we have a character array, and we just call it frisky for instance and this character array uh, we don't have to define always straight away in terms of length that's what we've seen in the slides but we can basically say that this is equal to um, a fixed constant string that we call frisky and this is something that we can pass into a constructor of course for that we need to create a new constructor but let's in this main function already program as if we had this already so in that case all we had to do is, oops, now I see a problem. So we had two times frisky. So let's say frisky name. Oops. Frisky name is basically what we want to pass. So in that case, a cat that we call, the object is called frisky, but we also explicitly say that this particular cat is called frisky with a capital F in this case. So we add the string as one possible way to initialize this class. So what we'll have to do, in this case, this over here is completely set. What we'll have to do in this case is also in our class create a second constructor. Um, so we'll use just a second constructor and the difference is that we um, pass here uh, a character array uh, which we call name in this case. Also here we don't really have to define what the, what the name or what the length of the name is. Um, so let's say here for instance um, that this is the constructor um, with name setting. There we go. And for that we also in the CPP file have to do exactly what we've done here so initialize those variables, but at the same time also initialize the name to the one that has been passed. So here we have our character name array. 
And that means also that we will actually have to have a new name here as well. So also here we will have character name, or let's do its name, there we go, which is an array, and there we do need to specify how long it is. So let's start from now and say that this is always 10 characters long, for instance. And we can also put the 10 characters here, which we'll see is a little bit um, uh, silly, because 10 characters for a name is not that easy. Um, but for cats, I think this will work. Now, for both cases, we'll need to also initialize its name. So if we just have the default constructor, what do we do in that case? Well, we know that if we have strings, strings always end with a de delimiter. And this delimiter is basically um, shown like this. Um, so it's backslash zero as one particular character there. So this is the delimiter, which is a special character, which is an actual zero, um, which uh, tells the system, okay, now the string is finished. And if you put this as the first string immediately, then the default constructor has as its name zero, the delimiter. And therefore later, if you want to write out the name in any case, then the name for a default cat is empty. It will basically just have an empty string. Now, if we supply a name, we need to make sure that we can do something with that. Now, there are multiple ways we could do this. We're going to do this the hard way now. And um, this would be um, with, for instance, a while loop. Because we've had so many for loops, a while loop, I think, in this case, would work quite well. And we need to um, iterate over an integer. So let's start making an integer that we, for instance, set at zero. Um, and where we can uh, check for two particular things happening. So while one and the other is the case, so a logical and, so we need to check for two things, and only if those two things are true, we assign its name i, the value of name i. So we basically copy element per element everything from this string over here, or this character array over here, to this character over array over here. So that is basically what we do. And we do that until, of course, um, i is 10. Because if i is 10, we know that, it, um, that we went too far through the array. Um, in fact, um, well, no, let's, let's do it like that. Um, and i needs to be not only smaller than 10, but at the same time, we have to make sure that the name of i does not hit a delimiter. So if the name of i is equal to our string delimiter, there we go, um, or is not equal to our string delimiter, then we can immediately stop as well. Right? So that is basically it. And then at the end, so we could actually go until 9, I would say, uh, until 8. So if we end up at the, at the last end, then we can actually just say that its name on position 9, which is the very last position, we assign also, for good measure, um, the delimiter character. Now, the only thing that we haven't figured out yet is, oh, in that case, wait, If the delimiter has happened here, uh, we need probably also to increment i, I see already. And maybe we can start at 1. Well, this is also a bit too hard. OK, now I'm a little bit uh, thinking what I should do. So we could actually do it like this. We could say um, no, we increment i first and then put this over here. However, we can only do that if i is already not going to be 10. But that's also where we stop here. Right? So we make sure that i stops at, uh, the, um, at the position index 8, so going from 0 to 8. 
And if we then go to the next character, whether this is smaller than 8 or 8, it doesn't matter, you will always be able to write the delimiter character here as well. So this should work. So just to rephrase, if this name is 9 characters per the delimiter character, this will still work. If this is a shorter name and the delimiter character, this should still work as well. And I hope I'm totally right here. Okay, so this is basically creating a constructor um, which um, copies the contents of the, um, of the character array name over here into the class's own its name character. And this is something that you need to do because we don't want to use uh, a string library here. So this is basically the reason. Uh, you could, of course, do it much simpler with the string array as we've seen it in chapter 6. Right, so this is one thing we needed to do, um, and we can already check whether this works. Now, the only way we can see this works is if we, for instance, um, display the name of the cat. So we could, for instance, do this at the speak function over here. So when we say speak, we don't just show the, what the cat is saying, but also who is talking. So in this case, we could um, see out its name. Know that we can do that, oops, because its name is basically a C array. So it's basically a character array that is, has a delimiter uh, over here. Um, and then after that, we have a colon, so that we basically say our cat is saying meow. Right. And we can address its name because this is the cat's the class's own member variable. Okay, now for doing all of this, we need to first, as we've seen, we have lots of files here. We need to first compile um, the cat class. Oops, and there we already have immediate name uh, problem. You can already see that it's the underscore of its name that has been forgotten here. There we go. And I think. That should do it. Let's see. No. Its name over here. Do, did I save this? Yes. I didn't save this, and this is why this its name character was unknown. But at the same time, I also forgot to underscore over here, of course. Good. Live programming. Always exciting. Um, so now we have uh, created an object called cat.o with this uh, previous one. So now we need to compile our cat, what is it called, example over here, .cpp, and make sure to include our object file. And if we don't provide an executable, then it will uh, put this in the executable A out. So if you now um, launch this, then we can see that Frisky, the name Frisky is now here through this constructor given, and Frisky says meow. Right, that is the first thing I wanted to um, illustrate and uh, solve. The second thing is if we, for instance, want to present, and I didn't come up with a better example than this one, um, for instance, three different types of moods this cat can have. Now, moods, just like other things you might, uh, might think of, does not really belong to the cat uh, class itself. So in this case, a mood could be, um, for instance, sleepy or angry or sad. Um, could be cats, could be also other types of animals that have this. In this case, I'm going to say mood is a new uh, enumeration that I'm going to um, uh, start here. And the cat can be, for instance, Sleepy, which is, tends to be uh, happening a lot, I think. Um, hungry and angry, for instance. As you can see, I don't hold that much of cats. And these moods can now be used inside the cat class. Now, since they're in the same header, we can immediately use this as well. And we can use this as uh, a new uh, member vari variable, for instance. So we have now its moods. As a particular mood that we can set for the cat, for the cats, it's a bit bigger, so you can see that there's nothing more in this um, in this file than this 
few lines of code in this case. Now we've set our moods. Now what I want to do is exactly do what we've done with the name. We want to create a constructor um, with the mood setting. There we go. And instead of having then a character array as the parameter, we basically in this case have a mood that we uh, convey and that we can add to the constructor here. So note here that we have three different types of constructor. The default constructor, that's the one if we just would have cat frisky semicolon and that would be it. Or we can specify with the type of thing that we're delivering here what the mood is that we're setting. Now I could do this with a constructor, but actually let's not do this as a constructor, but as a, for instance, a setter. So I just say void set moods. I'll also put that uh, at the back here. So I'll put it over here so you can see the, um, that it correlates a little bit with the set weight setting. So in this case, it's not a constructor that is taking care of this, but it's uh, the user over here. So in this case, instead of um, saying that Frisky is just the cat and it has the name Frisky, um, and in this case, since we defined the constructor here such in such a way, um, its age and its name, uh, oops, its age and its weights are zero, as you can see here, um, we can also have in that case Frisky dot set moods, and there we can immediately set the mood for Frisky. We could, for instance, set it to Hungry. So this file is now not really, we don't really need to do anything anymore. Um, also here we have everything, oops, setting mood, set the cat's mood, that is probably a better descriptor. Also this is completely done. We have now a new um, data member, a new function. A member function for the class cats. The only thing we need to do now is um, set the mood of the cats. Um, and for that we can use exactly this as a template. So instead of setting the weight, we set the mood of the cats. And instead of having the weight as a long integer, we have our mood that we pass. And then it's mood becomes mood. The mood variable that we added to that we passed to this function. There we go. Now we need to know whether this now worked or not. And what we can do is that we can put this in the speak function. So in that, in that case, instead of saying meow, we can, for instance, if it's hungry, say something slightly different. That is, I think, calling for a switch function. So depending on the mood of the cats, we have different cases. So if the cat is, what is the first one, sleepy, then for instance we can output um, meow, something like this. Don't forget the blink statements, I'll put this over here so I can just quickly copy and paste it. There we go. Um, we also have hungry. And we also have angry. There we go, sleepy, hungry, angry. Um, and for hungry, it would be, for instance, meow with a question mark. And for angry, it would be, it's an explanation mark. So this can go away, exclamation mark. There we go, this can go away. Um, and now we have reformed the cat's a speak function so that depending on its mood it will say different things. So let's see if all of that worked. So I'll have to compile the cats. Oops, they already have a problem. Angry, hungry, etc. I was not declared in this scope, but it could be something that, that is different here. Let's see. Ah, it's the mood. It is already a problem. Let's start from the complete the use of in a mood without previous declaration. Ah, the problem is of course the 
this over here. So enumeration means that I just use uh, this without a, uh, an equal sign. So let's do that again. That's looking already a lot better. Um, and then um, it's mood was not declared. Ah, because I forgot the underscore again. So as I said, the underscore I usually use to declare that we have a, a private member, data member of the class. Um, it's, in this case, it serves the same function as the it's in this case. Okay. Right. So if I do this again, it should now work. There we go. And then we compile the executable as well. And then if we execute this, Frisky is indeed hungry and therefore sends me out with a question mark. If we redo this and we say Frisky is sleepy and we just do the last bit, so the linking, so cat.o did not change at all, is because we just have to uh, change what was here in the main function. We get Frisky saying, whoa. Okay, so in this case, we basically added two functionalities once with the enumeration and once with the, the name of Risky in this case. I hope this helped for your assignments and now we will start with continuing with the lecture slides for chapter 7.